Matrices are like two-dimensional vectors, organizing values into rows and columns. For example, each row may represent a patient, whereas each column contains biomedical characteristics. If you pick one row, you'd get all the information about the particular patient. If you examine one column, you'd get one of many biomedical characteristics about all the patients in the matrix. Whereas vectors in previous sections had only one row, a vector may contain multiple rows. Before we create a matrix, let's quickly look at how a sequence of numbers are generated using a colon. Here, we can create a sequence 1 through 6. To generate a more complicated series of numbers, we could use a function called seq, stand, standing for sequence. Sequence function takes from, to, and by optional arguments. Here, we are generating a sequence of numbers from 1 through 4, 12, incremented by 4. We can make a sequence of numbers into a matrix by using a function called matrix. We create a variable ma and assign a matrix with a number of rows, three, number of columns being two. We can look at ma and let's create another matrix, mb, with the number of rows being 3 and number of columns being 1. Note that a matrix cannot contain multiple data types. In our case, MA and MB exclusively contain numeric values. Sometimes we like to combine a different matrices and vectors. CBind and RBind functions stand for column binding and row binding. It could be used to combine any combination of vectors and matrices, as long as their length and dimensions are compatible. Here, we can bind rows of MA with new vector Or we can also save binding MA and MB into M. Here, now the M has columns of MA and columns of MB. Try to row bind MA and MB. Because MA is 3 by 2 matrix and MB is a 3 by 1 matrix, R returns an error stating that two matrices do not have the same number of rows. To extract one value or a subset of values from a matrix, use square brackets with both row and column indexes such as index of row, comma, index of column. If we'd like to know the element in the first row and the third column, here is my comment. We can also use a sequence of numbers generated with colon operator within square brackets. Here I'd like to know the values in the first row. Leaving the row spot or the column spot empty will extract, respectively, an entire column or an entire row. Here, instead of typing 1 through 3 column, I simply leave the second argument empty and we get the first row. 
we could also get multiple rows or columns. Here, I, I can retrieve the first and second columns. Importantly, you will get an error if you enter an index of row or column that is out of bound. My matrix M does not have a fifth row, therefore R gives an error. Of course, if you have a large matrix or have recently loaded a matrix, you may want to ask R the number of rows or the number of columns for your matrix. And rows is a function that provides number of rows, and call provides a number of columns. Or simply the function dim, shortened for dimension, returns both the number of rows and columns. Matrices being two-dimensional, we could flip the columns and the rows. Such operation is called transpose and used often in statistics. Simply use the t function to transpose a matrix M here. Now let's compare it to the original matrix M, and we see that the first row has become the first column in the transposed matrix. Sometime in statistics, diagonal elements which are located at row 1, column 1, row 2, column 2, and so on, may contain significant information about the data. Therefore, R provides a quick way to extract those values. Let's look at the diagonal elements of M using a function DIAG. Diagonal function behaves differently based on an input. As we just saw, uh, with a matrix, diagonal function will return a vector of a diagonal elements. For a single numeric value, it will create an identity matrix, which is a square matrix with ones in diagonal positions. Here, we create a 3x3 three three identity matrix. For a vector, it will create a diagonal matrix whose diagonal elements are derived from an input vector. The square matrix then would have both the number of rows and columns matching the length of an input vector. Let's create a diagonal matrix with 1, 2, 3 in its diagonal position. Basic math functions from the beginning of this course can be readily applied to matrices. You can add, subtract, multiply, or divide each element in a matrix by a single numeric value. Here, we can add single value 2 to a, vector, to a matrix M. We can multiply matrix M by a single value number 2. You can also perform matrix multiplication. Let's create M2. Here, the new matrix M2 is a matrix with the number of rows being 3. And now we are ready to multiply matrix M with a matrix M2. We can display M3. Note that each element in M3 is a dot product between a row in M and a column in M2.